This is football.com and the name of the show is called In My Opinion. And this is part two of my interview with Joe Herman or Tony Dungy, Red Zone 2009. This interview today is such a blessing and I can see why Tony Dungy had you a part of the, uh, brought you in to be a part of the uh, Red Zone 2009. Well, Tony is the epitome of, uh, of a man that uses his platform for the betterment of other people. And when you treat people correct as a coach, the byproduct is winning. Right. Uh, there, there are three fundamental lies that every boy in America receives that creates this chaos. And, and the first one is this. Every boy in this country, by the time they're eight, nine years old, have been taught that somehow masculinity has something to do with athletic ability. Mm-hmm. Size, strength, is the ability to compete. Uh, compete. And I would say that is an absolute lie. Athletic ability doesn't have a single thing to do with being a man. Right. Second lie they learn in this country when they're in junior high, and that is we associate masculinity with issues of sexual conquest. Somehow the capacity to bring girls alongside of ourselves and then use them to either gratify a physical need or to validate a, some kind of insecurity. Right. And then the third lie is a little later in life is we teach men in this country that their value and worth as a man is somehow connected to their uh, uh, economic success. Mm-hmm. And so you can measure what a man is based on job title, position, and power. Right. So I've been figured out how to use the platform of coaching to stand against that and teach young boys that what it means to be a man truly is the capacity to love and be loved. It's all about relationships. And the second thing is at the end of your life, you want to look back over and know that you had some kind of cause, some kind of purpose that left the world a better place. Mm -hmm. So masculinity is about relationships and a cause. And when you think about team sports, they're fundamentally about two things. You teach players how to have relationship with other players, right. how to be dependable for and depend on. And the second thing, team sports are about learning how to commit to a cause. Mm-hmm. Every player brings their own individual abilities and offers that to the team so the team can accomplish what it wouldn't, uh, other ordinarily wouldn't be able to do. The right. Relationships in a cause are the essence of what it means to be on a team, and it's the epitome of what it means to be a man. Okay, Joe, so let's talk about the NFL in the era in which you played and the NFL that you see today. Do you see the players, let me, let me correct this, do you see as much love for your teammates and love for the game that I saw back when you were playing that you see, do you see that now? Do you see that in the NFL now? Or do you see more yeah, I, I meet more me? Well, I'll tell you, I, uh, I, uh, the NFL Management Council brings me into a lot of NFL teams. And I deal on player conduct issues. In the NFL, every team has to have a mandi- mandatory 90-minute uh, session during the season. And much of what guys get in trouble around is around false concepts of masculinity. They suddenly feel devalued, disrespected, and out comes some kind of response that creates all kinds of havoc and pain for them and other people. Uh, I don't see much difference. I've never left an NFL team in this current era where I haven't been tremendously encouraged. Mm -hmm. I see players that love the game, are committed to each other, are really trying to uh, make a difference in their families and in their communities. As you uh, said earlier, the problem is the media presentation from that. I think at the end of the day, I think the only difference really is the amount of exposure and the, uh, you know, the economics, the money players are making. But Mm -hmm. when I played ball, when reporters found out something was going on with the players negatively, uh, they seldom would report that. Mm -hmm. Today, you've got a whole media situation that can't wait to find one little thing. And then they highlight three or four guys on a team that uh, are having difficulties which taints the other 50 guys on right. that team. Right. I'm very encouraged about the uh, uh, the players and what's going on in the NFL today. That's good that you say that. That's good you say that. And I'll tell you what, you look at our society now, everybody wants to be first and everybody wants to get there quickly. So it's a fast food, I call it a fast food society. No one wants to earn it, walk th- through the steps that it takes to be successful. So I, I, I think you're right on that. Let's take a look at that lineup that you have on Red Zone 2009. 
Joseph a die? How was it working with Joseph a die? Well, fantastic. Uh, you know, uh, what Tony did was Tony really, and, and having those in-depth relationships, long-term relationships, Tony got all these players with tremendous character. Uh, not only have great character, but conduct on and off the field. Mm. And all of them bring great integrity to the messages that they're going to be delivering uh, Tuesday night across this country. So uh, they, they're all players that understand the influence that they have and the responsibility 